Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant. In this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about using Tunit to create video that looks like a cartoon. Now, you might think that just applying Tunit to your video should do that, but you have to realize something. Cartoons are designed a certain way, and they're designed with certain limitations. And what I often hear is people apply Tunit to their video, and they find that, you know, it just doesn't look like a cartoon. And I want to talk about why that is and what you can do to make sure that your video does look more like cartoon. So here's a video of my daughter that was uh, shot on the beach uh, with an iPhone. And you know, you're looking at it and you can see, I'll just kind of let it play back from here. There's a lot of things that are wrong with it in terms of making it look like a cartoon. For starters, you can just look on the ground and you can see a lot of this twinkling and a lot of chatter going on in the video. And the fluid motion of the whole thing is actually, uh, it, it's a lot. And in cartoons, you don't tend to have that. You might get something that looks like that in a 3D animation that's been turned to cartoon. But even that, I usually look at and I'm like, yeah, that's 3D made into, you know, using toon shaders. It doesn't really look like a cartoon. And so as you can see, as we look at this, it's kind of like, it has the feel of being a filter. Now, don't get me wrong, Tunit, compared to pretty much everything on the market that I've seen, is probably the best filter for creating, you know, best plugin for creating uh, a cartoon look, but it doesn't go all the way. It doesn't get you to the point of your video looking like a cartoon because you have to shoot your video with cartoon in mind. So in this case, I've got a camera that's not locked down. There's a lot of motion and a lot of stuff going on in the background versus my character. And, you know, it all basically smacks of being a video that was shot and then done some kind of tune shading to it. Now, another example of this is where there's not necessarily a lot of motion in the background in this video. But what's going on here is that there's a lot of perspective shift. And there's also a bit of uh, noise that you can see there. And again, this is the uh, original clip. So you can see it's a real clip. And, uh, you know, it ends up like we're using real video that wasn't on a camera that was locked down and uh, that didn't have necessarily even lighting or any of that. And so basically you end up with something that, again, looks kind of, you know, like like video that was converted. Now this one happens to look a lot better than most I've seen. In fact, I usually use this as an example of uh, applying Tunit and then just showing a, a pretty decent result with just the start. But in the end, I'm not really satisfied with the way this looks. And by the way, this was shot by Stu Mashowitz, uh, our creative director here for Magic Bullet. Um, and usually we use this to show off Mojo or other stuff. But I wanted to use it to show Tunit. And as you can see, look, there's some there's some some good stuff going on here in terms of that cartoon shading. But again, there's a lot of chatter and also the motion is so fluid. And so what ends up happening is people end up applying Tunit as a last step that's almost an afterthought. And I even see this on composites. People put together these great composites and then they're like, hey, let me put uh, Tunit on top of it and let's see what happens. So you get something that looks like this. And even though this is a composite made of many layers in After Effects, you see a lot of noise chatter in the background. There's a lot of things going on. And even though that's a still image. So let's uh, take a look how you can go from that to something that's more like this. And even though this, you know, yeah, it does uh, feel a little bit like video, it kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Lord of the Rings, the original cartoon, I want to say it was like the 70s or early 80s, in which uh, they had uh, rotoscoping where the actors were filmed and then it was turned into video. And this is kind of what it looked like. And, you know, obviously there's been updated with some cool flares and other things. But essentially, you know, it has a lot more of a cartoon feel to it than you would get out of uh, something that you apply tune it to as a last step. Because in this video, Video, what I've done is I've applied Tunit to the characters and to the background separately. I've added in the shadows after Tunit, and I've even added in a couple of effects that were applied a after Tunit was applied to each of these things. And the result is uh, significantly different. Also, because cartoons tend to work on uh, half of the normal frame rate, so if you're 24 frames per second, usually it's a 24. Uh, it's usually it's a 12 frames per second. So that's what I've done here. I've also changed the frame rate, and I think it's looking pretty good for what it is. Now, a few other things that you might have noticed are that the color in this cartoon composition are a bit different than the ones in this one. And that's purposeful. I've done something here to limit the color palette, which, you know, when they're making cartoons, there's a limited number of colors that they work with. You know, video has millions of colors, and with cartoons, they really do work with a much more limited palette. And so I've done that to also help uh, sell the effect. And also, you'll notice that in this uh, bad composition, we've got um, a lot of detail in the background versus uh, here, 
where there's a lot less detail in the background and it's all devoted to the main characters. So that's again something that we've done to help bring out the cartoon look because again with backgrounds that aren't as important they don't put as much detail in when they're working on cartoons. So now let's take a look at how we can actually recreate this. So here I am in After Effects and I've got this basic composition that has my actors uh, keyed out. Uh, they were filmed on a green background at Orion Media in Australia and uh, the background has been keyed out. I'm not going to spend time on that. There's plenty of tutorials on our site that cover keying. And I'm also, uh, I've got this uh, background here of just an image from iStock Photo. And as you can see, it's a terrible composite, nothing that would ever pass muster in television or film. But, you know, for what we're going to do, it's perfectly good. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, make the colors of this stuff match up a little better. You know, I'm looking at this, and the background's got a brownish kind of tint to it. The actors uh, clearly weren't filmed there in the same light. So let's see what we can do about that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll select my background layer and I'll choose Effect, Magic Bullet, Colorista, and I'll choose Colorista 2. And I'm really just going to use the auto balance. I'll find a point that I think should be the white point. And, uh, and that actually uh, brings out, you see we've got our whites and it gets rid of some of that tint that was there. And then I've got this uh, layer on top of it of my actors, which has a pretty decent white balance. But just uh, to kind of get things to exactly where they need to be, I'll add in Colorista 2 again, and I'll, uh, I'll get my auto balance. I'll use this, um, this white staff as my, uh, as my auto balance color. And it, it makes a minor difference. It's pretty minor. But um, there's definitely something there which probably isn't going to come through in compression. But, you know, I just kind of want to show you the process. Anyway, this stuff is looking a little bit better in terms of color matching. But, of course, it's still not a good composite. And, again, it doesn't have to be because when we're doing with cartoon stuff, it doesn't need to be convincing. I just wanted to get some colors that were in the same range. Now, if I were trying to create a convincing composite, one thing that I would do would be using a light wrap, which is to pull the colors from the background and wrap them around our actors. And I've covered that in a couple of tutorials. But in this case, again, we're not trying to go for realism. And in fact, the light wrap would probably not help us uh, help our case in this, in this situation. But okay, now the next thing I want to do is create the camera motion. Now, I want to point out that I'm using a still image as the background. And I used it in this case, too. So take a look at our cartoon bad here. Even though, even though I've got, um, it's a still image in the background, you saw all this chatter. And that's happening because the tunit was added at the end. I'm going to add tunit to the background layer separately so that even as the camera moves, pixels aren't revealed and, you know, it doesn't create this noise. But I'm just going to add the motion in right now and then we'll look at how to add in tunit. So getting back to here, let me add in a new uh, a null object. And I will make these layers children of the null. And then I'm going to set its uh, scale over time from 100 to, I don't know, 145, something like that, 145%. And also, I'm going to hit P to reveal position, and we'll set its uh, position right here. And over here, we'll just kind of bring it up so that over time, you know, we've got something that looks more like this. There we go. I think that's okay. So if we do a quick uh, RAM preview now, we've got basically a zoom in. Of course, I want it to feel a little more like it was filmed uh, handheld, so I'm going to add in a wiggle value for the position. So let me alt-click on the stopwatch, and I'll choose wiggle 2, so twice a second, up to 10 pixels. And then we do it like this. And as you can see, it feels a little bit more like it was shot handheld. Now, you could also do some rotation animation. Um, you know, just set it to wiggle rotation. But I got to tell you, doing that, even a tiniest bit of wiggle for rotation goes a really long way. So if I were writing that expression, I'm not going to do it here. But I probably would tell it to uh, wiggle every once every two seconds. So 0.5, comma, and then I'd say up to only one degree of rotation. Believe me, it's a lot. So... Uh, if I were doing it, I might do it that way, but I'll skip it for here. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to start uh, adding in my cartoon effects. So with my uh, back layer here selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Red Giant, Tune It, and we're going to go with Tune It, Roto Tune. Okay, 
And as you can see, there's a lot of detail back there. So the thing that I want to do is, first of all, I want to turn off my uh, comic outlines, right? I don't need those. But what I will do is turn on my soft outlines. And that gives me some amount of detail, but um, not a ton, you know, just enough to have some kind of detail back there, not compared to the way it was. And also, I'm going to add in, just because I think it'll look cool, let's add in some light coming in from the background here. So let me choose Effect, Trap Code, Shine. And immediately the background looks really funky. So let's tell it to do this. Transfer Mode should be... Let's try screen, and we'll see if add will work too. And for colorize, I'll tell it to use none. So it's using its original color. And let me take the center point here and bring it up so that it's coming out of the window like that. And let's do a couple of things here. Let's In pre-process, let's tell it to uh, raise the threshold for what can be considered there for as a light source, right? So now... All that's happening, it's only choosing the brightest areas of that background to create this look. And that's looking pretty good. Um, I might want to boost my light a little bit, just a tiny bit. You know, something like... Boost light goes a long way also. That's looking pretty cool. But, you know, I think as I look at this, I think I can finesse the, uh, the background details a little bit more. So let me just come back up into here, into my uh, tune it effect. And I'm going to turn down uh, my main blur, which is right here. And I'm going to set the threshold to 30. And that gets rid of a lot of the detail. And I really like that because some of the areas of detail are preserved. It's got a bit of a stylistic look. There's definitely some detail in the front, but the stuff that's in the background is much harder to see. And that, uh, that definitely helps uh, create the look that I'm trying to go for on the background. All right, well, next up is to add the cartoon effect to our actors. So I'm going to select our the layer with our actors here and I'm going to choose effect red giant tune it and tune it roto tune and the defaults are actually pretty good in this case although uh, one thing I want to do here is let's just go into our color effects and make things a little bit lighter um, we can set our color effects lighter and we go with 25 percent higher and it just brings them out a little more and uh, it's going to help a little later when we do our color correction to the entire thing. But it's looking pretty good. And, uh, you know, if I do a quick RAM preview now, and by quick I mean a little slow because, you know, um, Tunit is a bit of a hog when it comes to uh, rendering. And as you can see, we definitely have more of a cartoon look to it, but there's a couple of things going on here. Now, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that cartoons tend to work on a lower frame rate. So I'm just going to go into my composition settings. I'm going to tell it to work at 12 frames a second. And again, do a preview now, and you'll see that it's going to start looking a lot more like a cartoon. And yeah, I think it's looking a lot better, actually. So uh, the next thing to do um, is we're going to add in some shadows for our actors. So... With my layer selected, I'll choose Effect, Red Giant Warp, and we'll go with Red Giant Shadow. And let's just move this up. Okay. And we'll tell it to use, uh, let's try Backlit and see how that goes. There we go. Actually, let's try Frontlit. Here, bring this down just like this. doesn't need to be too much, right? Just a little bit of something there. Bring it down. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I just don't like the fading off of the shadows there. So what we're going to do is we'll just set the, uh, the fade length. We're going to set that to, the, sorry, the fade start to 100 so it doesn't start fading until the end, which in this case we won't even see. So there we go. And now again, do a RAM preview. And look pretty good. Okay, it's not perfect, and we can definitely uh, correct as we go over time, but I'm going to let this be. It's good enough for what I need, and um, looking pretty good. Okay, so now here's the thing that really ultimately helps this uh, look a lot more like a cartoon, and that is the limited color palette. 
So that color palette uh, can be limited um, through a couple of different ways, but I'm going to use uh, Magic Bullet Looks. So we're going to do a color grade on this. So uh, I'll choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'll choose Effect, Magic Bullet Looks, and I'll choose Looks. And then I'll click on Edit to get into the Looks Editor. And here I am in the Magic Bullet Looks interface and um, if you use Magic Bullet Looks, you already know what this is about. But it's a great tool for creating some really interesting film looks and uh, doing color grading and even some color correction if you need to. Uh, Colorista 2 is much better suited for the actual corrective process, but uh, Looks 2 does have a lot of Colorista's features. But in any case, here I am. And, you know, there's a couple of things I could do. I could try creating a tool from scratch, uh, a whole bunch of tools from scratch and create like a look. Um, but I have a, a great guru pack uh, from Simon Walker. It's called uh, the Master Artist Pack and let's take a look at that. And it's in the style of many different uh, kinds of artists and basically working with the kinds of color palettes they work with and their kinds of lighting. And so like for example Botticelli, this is something that fits more along the lines of what he would be doing. Uh, Renoir and uh, you know, uh, I probably did not pronounce that correctly. Um, but also Monet, uh, Monet Sunset, and Monet Day. And then, you know, the one that I really like for this is um, it's going to be right here, Cezanne, right? I like the way that looks. I think it looks pretty awesome. And uh, I, think, uh, I think it looks good. And, you know, you can try other things again, like Chagall has got these green tones. And, uh, you know, against like uh, Picasso, Bleu if you want to go that way, um, or Hopper, who's actually one of my favorite artists, who's got sort of like a darker treatment, a little bit more depressing in his color palette a lot of the time. But let's, uh, let's stick with uh, Cezanne, and, um, and you can see this is already looking really interesting and really good. It, it's really got something that I, that I just really dig here. So with that done, I'm going to click Finished, and we're going to jump back into our uh, main comp. And back in After Effects, uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's definitely got a lot more of a cartoon look to it. And, you know, the shadows, there's some fixing I need to do there. One thing I might do is I might separate these characters out. I might rotoscope uh, just to break them apart so I could do the shadows separately. That way I could line the shadow effect up to the two feet there. And then, um, you know, they would kind of still connect because the, other than this one place where the their weapons sort of cross, you could do a pretty good and pretty easy roto uh, to separate them out. And then, you know, just use the shadows on each uh for each character separately so that you could line them up with their feet. But this is just to give you a quick example of what uh, this looks like. And, you know, you'd animate that shadow over time to just match up with the feet. But I think, I think you have a pretty good idea. So the last thing that I did in, a, in my final composition that I showed you before was I added in uh, some lens flare. So let me just uh, choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And we'll call this one Flare. And I'll just move it to below Magic Bullet Looks. I'm also going to add in a new null object. And we'll call it Flare Control. And from there, I'm going to add, again, with my Flare layer selected, my Adjustment layer, I'll choose Effect, Null, sorry, Null Light Factory, and I'll choose Light Factory. And... Let me just do one thing before we get into the, the look of the flare. Let me choose, um, just get in here and choose to add an expression to our light source location. Okay, and let me just quickly get the position value from our flare control. So I had P to reveal position, and yeah, let's just grab it. Tell it to grab the position of our flare control. And so now, wherever that null object is, that's where our uh, that's where our flare is going to be. So if I move the null object, as you can see, it moves. Everything moves with it. So let's uh, let's start animating. So with my flare layer selected, I'm just going to go to brightness. I'm going to turn it down to zero for the moment. And let's try to find the point at which these two guys they connect their first strike. Right there. Right, so with my flare control, let me just grab that right here. Seems like the right place. 
and I'll set the position. Let me just set this to a hold keyframe and move it right there so the first one is there. So then what we'll do is for flare control for our sorry for our flare brightness, I'll set a keyframe for zero. But let me just move back one frame to where they're not connected. Flare brightness at zero, go one, and I'm gonna bring this brightness up to one hundred. And then we'll move I don't know, one, two, three frames down, maybe even just two, and we'll set the uh brightness to zero. And let's take a look here. Let's just hit uh for my flare control, hit U to reveal the keyframes and also for my flare U to reveal keyframes. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move the flare control null to right above the flare just so I can see all these keyframes together. And let's just do let's see a quick preview here of this. They clash right there. Let's see. Okay, so let me just change what my flare looks like. Let me choose options over here, and I'm just gonna choose load. And in my null custom lenses area, there's a whole bunch of uh, presets that you can use. I'm gonna go into. I have um, here Harry Frank's cinematic flares for null light factory, and that's another one of the uh, Guru presets that you can find as a part of the Guru suite. I'll jump in there, and my favorite one is uh, Apollo. I love it. It's just awesome looking. And uh, we'll add that in. You can see what Apollo looks like. And I'll click OK. And you get a really interesting look. Something that suddenly uh, lends itself to the color correction that we're doing. And by the way, please note that our flare layer is below our magic bullet looks layer. Let me just rename this so that you can see. Um, and that's important because, because you want to have the flare sort of work with the rest of the colors. And the way to do that is to do the color grading on top of any of your effects. So with that done, so let's do just a preview of this little spot right here. Let's take a look. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I could probably adjust the position a tiny bit. Let's say it was right here, just for just for this uh, second one right here. Let me just grab this and move it over just for one frame there. And again, it's just to keep the point. And you, you'll animate over time. You'll animate the position of the flare. Anyway, as you can see, I have uh, jumped ahead in time here. And this is uh, the final animation. I've got uh, a bunch of keyframes for the null. And I've also done some keyframing for the lens flares. And uh, this is looking pretty sweet, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. Don't forget, you can always download a free trial version of the software that I used here at redgiantsoftware.com. So go to any product page and then click on free trial, and that will take you to the uh, trial version sign-up page. And if you like free, you can get tons of free presets for our plugins on redgiantpeople.com. A lot of cool stuff here that's coming in, new stuff every day. Finally, if you're really, really, really into free stuff, Head over to our main page and click on products here and then just move down to free products and you can get tons of free stuff. We've got Magic Bullet Colorista free, Magic Bullet Lut Buddy, and uh, this one might be particularly helpful in this project, Magic Bullet Quick Looks Free. It gives you 20 different film looks and you can try it with, uh, you know, with this kind of experiment. And of course, you, know, you can always get to the Magic Bullet Looks, the complete version, which is just completely awesome. Finally, don't forget to keep up with the latest news about new products, tutorials, tips, and deals by following us on Twitter, Facebook, or on our blog. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for Red Giant TV. I'll see you next time.